Have any questions about your work in your creative process? I'm here. I will um, pretend to know the answer. I'll wear my glasses, which are um, actually a, a leftover from my Halloween costume. You know, really. My son went into the Halloween store over there on Broadway and 11th Street, and he was like, "I want to be Spider-Man." And then my husband said, "We want to be something too." So we just got some glasses off our shelf. And I've been wearing them ever since. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Just to make you have real faith in things that I'm going to say to you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anybody have any questions about your work or your creative process? Anything? Okay, I'll see you later. first right and then after I have the story then I think about the dialogue and then so on and so forth but I always get really hung up on the story in which then it becomes more of a novel than an actual play um, and yeah I just wanted to know what ways he 
can I go about, like, I guess, not, not, not doing that, but more of having the dialogue in my head as I'm going on with the, with the depth of the story. Right. Do you ordinarily have the dialogue in your head at any point? When does the dialogue into your, come into your head? When I realize that I have a, like, I have just a full on story, mm -hmm. and with, and then there's no there's no dialogue, and so by the end of it, I was like, okay, I love I love this for the first scene, and then I go, wait, there's no, it's just, <laughs> it's, it, it's it's just, just a story, it's just a story. Just a story. Yeah. But, I mean, but what's great is that you're so raw, right? That's right. So you she's right. Everybody heard her, right? She, she does this cool thing. So uh, there are different ways, as you know, there are different ways to approach everything. Right? And there's no right way. And there's no one way. So what might work for you on this project might be less effective on the next project and you might have to do a combination of the two on the next project. So you don't want to, um, you want to remain flexible at all times, right? Okay. One, the two things, it's, it, it's interesting, you want to Cultivate your flexibility, so you want to try different ways to do it, which is great, so you're here and wondering how you might change it up. And you also want to encourage a form of discipline, which might seem like rigidity. So you do both, right? I don't know if anybody's talking about the police or some kind. But we don't know where he is or she. Um, but anyway, so you want to do both, right? Yeah. You want to do both. So you want to, one thing that you can do to encourage that rigidity or that discipline is you want to show up every day and spend at least 20 minutes writing. I don't know why 20 minutes is the is the optimal thing, but I mean, we're getting to your subject then. For 20 minutes seems to be a wonderful, sort of small, effective unit of time. If you don't have any time during the day, 20 minutes, you got 20 minutes somewhere, right? Okay, yeah, absolutely, exactly. Okay, so, okay, okay, but that's great. So if you don't have like a 20 minute, big wall to wall, 20, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. You want to keep showing up for it. I mean, my son plays soccer and his coach said, 20 minutes with the ball every day. And I was like, 20 minutes, oh my God, it must be a magical thing. So the soccer coach says it, the writing coach says it, the meditation teacher says it. It's a small unit of time, but it's totally possible. Think about where you waste 20 minutes of time. Right? Okay, and you look like over there, which means like you surf the internet. <laughs> It's that side long book. Okay, so here you go. So you have your, you think of your story, like the plot, and then you're writing it and you go, whoa, where are the characters? Where's the dialogue? Right? Okay, so how can you, I think it's a great way to start working. Think about the big story, beginning, middle, and end, maybe, or at least beginning and end. You know where it ends. Great. Okay, so now to get into the characters, do they have names? I'm assuming they do. Right. And so can you feel like maybe what their bodies feel like? Oh yeah. Great. How far, so when you think of your character, like character, maybe her name is character A, how far away from you are her, are you? How far away from her are you, distance wise? Um, character wise or? No, just like in, in terms of feet, actual. <laughs> yeah, I know, see I'm very literal. Uh, like, like when you see her in your mind's eye, where is she? She's a little distant. Like right, that's right. That's what I'm thinking. But because you probably are seeing the whole story, and you're leaning back and you're going, "Wow, I can see the whole story!" Right. So what I want you to do is decrease the distance. Get really close. How close do you have to be to write somebody? You have to be really close. Like maybe this close, right? Or maybe so close you're going to walk into her, walk around her shoes, and then suddenly you're seeing the story from here, right? And you're a character in the play. See what I'm saying? So you have to go inside and get a lot closer. To the right now you're seeing it from a distance. Right? So I want you to get inside the character. You understand what I'm saying? So you want to walk around like one of your characters, character A. You want to talk like she talks. You know? Act it out. Do you, you know, if that yeah. feels weird, yeah. that feels okay, right? Yeah. You can that's, like, that's normal. it's theater, that's normal. <laughs> great, great, so you gotta act her out, right? So you're gonna be moving through the story, and then also what you have to do is you have to do it many times. So you have three characters. You do it once for her, then the second time for that one, the third time for that one over there. Tracking the character through the story. You have to do it three different times. And then you move back again and see the big picture again. And then you move back in. And act so it's a constant back and forth. 
you see, and then you start to hear the characters, feel the characters, write the characters, and they're not at a distance. Does that make, does that make sense to you? It makes sense. Okay, so tr try that. Just get a lot closer to your characters. Okay? Why are you doing it? Thank you. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like making sure myself all those, like, really, it's the, it's the showing up every day that will lead to feeling the characters in our day, too. I mean, yeah, so. No, I know, we're laughing. But that's usually, 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 like 100% of the time, if I'm having problems writing or anything, anything, it works with anything, if I'm having problems, fill in the blank with exercise, or a relationship, or blah, 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 I go, am I putting the time in? And if I'm having a problem with it, usually the answer is no. No, I'm not putting the time in. I'm spending my writing time reading about, you know, right? Right? You know? And then it's like, well, maybe I can shift that. Maybe I can change that. And if I can change that, usually putting the time in yields the kind of results that I'm hoping for. So... Always, that's the first thing we check, okay? All right. All right. Well, thanks, that was a good question, though. That was a really good question. And also, there's nothing wrong with writing the novel, you know, right? Okay. So if they're novels, that's cool, too. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, I'm going through, a, I'm at a point now where I was saying last week that I'm trying to make a connection, you know. Right. And um, it came to me, but what I wanted to use, I found didn't, um, follow, you know, the, um, what I had already. So okay. I'm going back, but what I'm finding is that um, I have to wait till I get that um, that that sense of um, you know, the inspiration right, to do right, it. Right. You know, I can't like force myself right. to do it. But at the same time, I'm always thinking about it, right, thinking right. about it. But you right. know, to actually sit down and commit, you know, right. find that you know, I'm waiting, you know, for that breeze to blow in. You're waiting for the breeze. That's so beautiful. I'm waiting for the breeze to blow in. Remind me of your name. Philip. Philip. Right, Philip. So, is it? I mean, is it okay for you to wait for the breeze to blow in, or you want me to tell you what I? No. How, how do you? How I'm, do you I'm, I'm okay with it. Like okay. I said, as long as I'm thinking about it. Sure, sure, sure. You know, but like you know, to sit down and actually go like this. That's like a certain commitment, even though it may not remain, you know, later right, on. But, right, right. You know, but. Um, I'm just, as long as I, I realize I'm thinking about it, right. I'm okay with it. Okay, you know, okay. Uh, if you have something you want to say. Well, I'm going to, well, I mean, because I'm going to say something. This is the thing. Sometimes our writing time or our time for creativity can only be turn on the timer and kind of sit in front of the page. And that's kind of, that's great, actually. That equals writing for 20 minutes, too. Sometimes that's all we can do. Sometimes the, the, like Phil says, the wind is not blowing, right? And we, all we can do is just sit there, and that actually counts as showing up every day, right? And there's a famous saying. There's so many famous sayings about this. One is, um, inspiration is for amateurs. So, so, you know what I'm saying? So I would say, if you want to step up the game, Give a try sometimes of leaning, not waiting for the wind to blow, realizing the wind is coming from you. You know, the wind in the river. The wind is your inspiration is actually inside you. Inhale. You know, there it is. You know, it, it's like um, you know, I mean, whatever people believe in God or not or whatever, the spirit is inside you, and. So you can, and the spirit is actually okay with you writing something that's not like perfect and great first time around. So you can try it, but if it feels like really like not cool, then forget that saying and just show up every day. You see what I mean? That's okay too. So you can, we can, again, this is our flexibility, right? The discipline is to show up every day if you work, as Philip says, constantly be thinking about it. That's part of the discipline and you're doing the work. Okay, and if you want to maybe take it to the next level, if you want to, or, or lean into it a little bit, you know what I mean? You know, you don't have to like put, just, just lean into it a little bit. Because sometimes the spirit is like, come on, Philip, like, come on, yeah, there you go. Come, come on, man, come on. See what I mean? See, the spirit wants you to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> reach a little bit, you know what I mean? Reach a little bit like that. And I think that's sometimes all we gotta do. We just gotta reach a little bit more. Or my husband always says, he says, ah, oh, you're running another marathon. And here you are at mile 20, 22. You know, and I, I've never run, I've run 22 miles, you know, but, but I've never run like a marathon, right? So, but he has. And he says, you know, you get to that mile, has anybody run a marathon? Well, you get to that mile 22, and apparently, like, you have nothing left. Okay, and, they, and that's that thing, and you have to just push, you know, you have to just keep going. And somehow, continue. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So try it. But if it feels like totally like, no, uh, 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 then it's okay. Okay, so you can, you can play with that a little bit. But know that sometimes that resistance is the spirit saying, what you got? What you got, Philip? You know, you go, <laughs> Right? And, and that's all, that's what the Spirit's waiting for. You know? So, it's, it's okay. But thank you for showing up, though. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Anybody else? Yes. Um, I'm Holly. So, Hi. it's Rama, right? Yes. Rama. So, I think I'm the total opposite yeah. of Rama. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> like, no, I mean, I'm so close. I think I uh, can write dialogue for hours, right. like, like, of the character. But I don't think structurally at right, all. Right, it right. just kind of like the space between the characters right. is what's exciting for me. Oh, great. The back and forth and and uh, sometimes minutia and details. Like I don't know what's important right. in the play right. for a long time. I don't know what the center of it is. Right. So I mean I've done different things to play with structure, like put cue cards of different things up and right. but I'm just wondering if you have any um habits or practices that you do if you have a bunch of material right. in terms of playing with structure. Right, right. And this is, and remind, so you know, Holly. Holly. So Holly, right, so that's really, that's, it's, it's great, because it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, um, right. you guys could just, um, write right. together. But I know, right? yeah, you can write together, but it's really cool, because, yeah, I, I mean, and I, and this is not what Holly's saying, but I've had students over at the, the wonderful school, NYU, the wonderful school, Say, oh, I thought of some great characters, and now I gotta think of a plot. Mm. I think it was maybe your some. Not, it was not Chris Bartlett, but I think some people they moaning that they had to think of a structure to go along with. It. It's not what you're saying, but um, I, I am a ginormous fan of structure. Like, it's it's ginormous. Um, but also, I'm a ginormous fan of like, oh, the human body, which is a structure. And this building is a structure, and it's all, everything's a structure. And sunrise and sunset, that's a structure. And the way a flower opens is a structure, and everything is a structure. And I love seeing patterns and design, in, you know, grand design, little design, poetry, a structure, right? So, if you're looking for, a, like, I love my characters, but what's the story, right? Is that kind of what you It's like I, it's like I have this story, uh -huh. just not, it's like all, all the pieces, but right. just not how they all fit together. Right, right. So you can, so maybe you're close like this and you're going, oh wow, she said that, and he said that, and he said that. You're like in the cocktail yeah. party. So now, you yeah. do the opposite. Yeah. You step back, not too far, you don't want to fall the thing, right? But you step back and you go, what's the, what's the story? You want to see, you want to see this. And you can't see that. You can't see the forest for the trees. You can't see the trees for the forest. And you can't see the forest for the trees, right? So you want to step back and take a look at it. And see if you can ask the characters, what's the story? You know, why are you here? Maybe spitball a few stories. Once upon a time, there was a character named maybe what, A. And she da 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 ba da ba ba And in the end, she did that, you know? You can ask the character, what's the story? What's, what story are you in? You know, if we ask, you know, Cinderella, she would tell us. You know, instead of getting all into, like, the dialogue between her and her sisters. You see what I mean? Yep. So the characters often know. Or you can actually step back and just look at the shape of it. F figure out what happens in the beginning. Figure out what happens in the end. Figure out what happens in the middle. Go like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. This kind of sense? Yeah. This kind of, yeah, but I love, oh gosh, I can go on and on about it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Um, I'm Jennifer. Um, I'm a 
I love it. <laughs> no, really, it's a, it's a, it's um, and I learned a long time ago that st st character is structure, structure is character. They're all of the same piece. They're not. It's not like you have to do one than the other. You're constantly doing both at once uh, in in sort of creative writing. My name is Wallace. Hi, Wallace. Hey. So, I've never had any formal training as a playwright. Right. I've taken a class here, but not like a degree or anything. Sure, sure. Me neither. Um, <laughs> so, one of the things that I noticed with my particular play yeah. is um, how willing am I let to let the characters say, be honest with each other? You know, instead uh -huh. of like saying what I need them to say in order to get to the next thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I'm wondering about when you're creating a play right. and you have the characters in the room right. and you notice maybe a character's holding back right. or, or uh, how do you deal with that? Right, right, right. Well, that's great. Everybody, everybody heard Wallace right. So right. he has his characters, and there it's the difference between what the character is saying, um, what the what the playwright wants the character to say, and what the character needs to say. Right. Those are two different things, and you can kind of sort of tell a lot when the play when the character is just kind of saying what the playwright needs, you know, or when the character is saying what they need. So geometry. Does anybody know anything about geometry? No, I know. This is, this is, this is, this is some like make believe geometry. Um, no, this is real geometry as it applies to writing. Two points make a line. That's like a, a truth in geometry. You're not here. Look, you've been here before. Yes. What's your line of your name? It's Jasper. Jasper. I, that's. I, I yes, I know. You were here and then you were back last week. But you've been here many. Yes, many years. Uh, like Jasper. Hi. Welcome back. Well, when we were different. But you know geometry. Two points make a line. Does that sound familiar? Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. As it applies to playwriting, two points make a line of dialogue. Okay. How good is that? Okay. It's because you take your character, character A again, because she's so busy. She's in three places. Character A, where is she now? Point number one. Where does she want to go? Point number two. You can hear her dialogue if you think of where she is right now in your play and where she wants to end up, right? Do you, you understand? Yeah, I know, it's great. I didn't go to grads, I didn't go to school formal training either. I learned this shit just by making it up outside. But I give it to you free of charge every Monday afternoon. But it's, but did you see how it works? So again, we do it, Robert, we get inside the character and we see what she wants. I want to, what I'm thinking of, well, what Hamlet, Hamlet's a guy, but it works. I want to figure out what to do about my stepfather, right? I want to figure, so sometimes he lies, sometimes he tells the truth, right? But he's trying to figure out what to do about his stepfather, that's his thing, okay? So you get inside the guts of your character and figure out what they want. What do they want? And that's gonna tell you, and, and where are they going? Because you, if you know the end, their end point, how do they get there? And that's what their dialogue is doing for you. It's helping them to negotiate that path. Does that make a kind of sense? Yeah. yeah. And do an audience doesn't need to know what they want, right? No, well, sometimes, like in what's that play? Three sisters, they want to go to Moscow. And then they think they say it. You know what I mean? In Glass Menagerie, what's her name? Homegirl, Laura, whatever her name. She wants a gentleman. She wants some fun, some you know, gentleman caller. She wants somebody in her life. So we yes, they the audience can know. Um, but they don't have to know. The character has to know. You have to know. You have to have a good idea about what they're, what they're going for. You know? Just like when you left your house this afternoon, right? You know, did you? Oh, I don't know. Right? You, right? I mean, you'd still be out there walking walk around a circle, probably like this. Oh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But you know where you want to go, so you're going to make your move there. Okay? We, I didn't have to know where you're going, but. You see, you see what I'm saying? So, and I would say generally, although people would disagree with me, I think less about the audience and more about my characters and the story.
because the audience can change from night to night to night. And if we're lucky, our plays get done all over the world in languages we might not even speak, and that's great. You know what I mean? We don't know what those audiences want. And all that. Okay, but if you focus on your characters, focus all so much attention on your characters and what they're doing and what they want. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I have a question about showing up, since yeah. we were talking about it earlier. Uh, I was just wondering how how does one show up, even to do 20 minutes a day? Not necessarily if you have writer's block, but if you're sad that day, or angry about something, or frustrated. How do you, do, how do you still show up when... Not, you know, horrible writer's block, I have no idea what to do, stare at the page until my eyes bleed, but just, you know, like, how, how, do, how do mere mortals show up to write every day when we have things that want to get in the way so badly? That's a great question, and that's, that's a question we all have to ask. How do we, it's, because it, it's, I mean, I, I know there are, there are, I mean, we, these are champagne problems we have, we know that, and we'll acknowledge that, because we don't, I, I don't know, you know, we, the simple theory, we don't have to walk five walk miles a day to get water, and things like that. Okay, so, luck, we're lucky, we're so lucky that way, that we have these kinds of problems, all the more reason to commit ourselves to showing up every day. It is really hard to show up every day when you're sad. It is really hard to show up every day when, ooh, you make the mistake of reading the news first thing in the morning, don't do it, because one of your favorite people is going to be caught doing something with the same thing, and oh, it's going to ruin your day. You know what I'm saying? And you really won't want to show up because so-and-so did such and such to who's he, what's he, and blah, 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 right? Okay. So there are things you can do to make sure that that kind of stuff, you can keep that stuff at bay, like show up before you go online to check your email and your Facebook and your news feed and your whatnot. Okay? So you can organize your day for success. So I would say, I would just personally, when you wake up in the morning, you maybe you do your meditation, I do, and then you show up for 20 minutes every day. And you get that done. And then you can go on for the rest of your day. You need a pen. Do you have a pen? You okay? It's, yeah, it's... There you go. Share. There you go. Boom. Thank you. Okay, but so I would suggest that, right? And then you see you're, you're setting yourself up for success. And if you're sad, I think all the more reason to show up for yourself. And if you're angry, all the more reason to just... And if all you can do is sit there and you set your timer, and again, I, I go on and on about how the phone is not such a great timer. Get an egg timer. Get a, get a timer that's something that if you can. It's something that only counts down the time, okay? If, but set the timer and just sit there and write, I am sad, I am sad, I am sad, that'll work. I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. That'll work. And then at the end of it, when the timer goes off, and I showed up today for myself. I showed up today for myself. You know, that's a great thing, right? It's, and know that you're doing it for, not just for yourself, which might sound selfish, which is, you know, gets a bad rap, but you're doing it for us. Because if you can do it, then you can encourage somebody else to do it, and then they can do it, and suddenly there's a good feeling going around instead of a shitty feeling. Right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And thanks for coming back from wherever you were. Where you were? Thanks for coming back. Hey, man. Hey, man. How you doing? Yeah. Um, my name is Marcus. I'm not a playwright. I'm, it's okay. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an actor. <laughs> That's cool. And uh, if, I'm, if someone like me was interested in dabbling into writing, if they started now, would you give that same advice that you just gave? Totally. Totally. Marcus is an actor, and you said, hey, I want to, you know, do some writing. Totally. You, you, what you do, I mean, you get up in the morning, you know, and you... Sit down. I mean, you don't, maybe forget the meditation. Sit down with your notebook and write for 20 minutes. Whatever comes to your mind. Or you can sit down with your, your computer, you know, if you like to type on your computer. And just journal entry for 20 minutes a day. See what's there. Because the desire to create something means that there's something there that wants to be created. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a, a character or two or a story that you want to tell. You know? And usually that means that there are people out there who want to hear it. Okay. Okay?
and just put in the time. Just put in the time, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yes. I have a question from online. Um, it's a person named Christy. She's from New Jersey. Oh, cool. Uh, Christy says that she lost three quarters of a script in the mountains, and in her attempt to rewrite it, she's wondering if she should completely start over or try to recall the brain. Wow. She lost three qu three quarters of it. Like, how does she maintain the, the other quarter, the quarter that she didn't lose? I'm just trying to, I mean, so she lost three quarters of a script in the mountains. In the mountains. A wood, wood mountain. Uh, wow. Okay, it's okay. She lost it in the mountains. And so should you try to recall it, or should you, or should she completely start over? I, I would say recall it. I think the starting over smells like it's something else. It smells like you, you yeah. Uh, I would say try to recall it. And I would say give yourself, Christy, a time limit. Uh, you know what I mean? Like give yourself like two weeks to get it out, you know, and get a draft. You know what I mean? I would, I would say that, yeah. It, 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 all, this also works if you lose a script in a flood, a fire, or if you're traveling through outer space, whatever. Yeah. Remind me of your name. Rebecca. Rebecca. Also took three years because he lost his Right. Kind of. Which one was it? Uh, no, no. Follow up to him. Yeah. Oh, right. Wow, 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 wow. He lost it. Huh? Oh, fire. A fire. 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 So the real lesson. Back shit up. Right. Right. Back shit up. Back shit up. But there are psychologically, it's, it's always interesting when we lose. You know what I mean? To lose something in, in, the, in the mountains or in a fire, or, you know. That um, and then what we do in response to the loss. I mean, that's the that's the how do we recover? Talk about back and shit. How do we recover from a loss like that? And what do you do when you've lost something that's very dear to you? And how do you recover? And I suggest jump right back in as fast as you can. And mourn if you need to, but but get that story I just got out of a meeting with somebody and blah, 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 long story short. They were like, how do you work on so many things at once? They were looking at me like, hmm. Um, and I said, well, um, I have turntables. So this is my new analogy now, turntables. So I have like many turntables, right? So, I mean, they're in my mind. I don't really have a turntable. But, you know, I mean, those of you who don't know what a turntable is, it's the thing that goes around the records, right? And, you know, so we know what that is, right? Okay, so, Imagine that you have you have two projects, Jacqueline, that you're trying to uh, two plays. I mean other things too, but okay. Sure, sure, sure. Two plays. Okay. So which one is the one you're working on now? Just just where is it in your brain? Uh, first draft. But where where um I'm sorry, where is it in space? Oh uh, it's right here. It's right here. Great. Okay. This is the play you're working on now, right? And why don't you you can can you move it up here in your brain? Great. So, like this. Can you hold your hand out like this? Great. Because it's a turntable. Right. Right. So it's going round, right? And the second one can be like right here. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're both spinning. Right? Or maybe right here. Maybe that's better. Right? They're both spinning. They're both in motion. They're both in play. They're both making progress. But this one is the main one that's more of in your, in your mind's eye than this one down here. And then maybe next week you're gonna have to maybe switch them. Okay. Because I know I can just like I shut down one of the turntables and the other. And right. And then I go, oh, it's, it's down. Where was I? It was on this. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Also, what you can do, I have a, in my apartment a whole uh, a, like a bookshelfy thing that I got at IKEA. It's really cheap, and it has these red like bins. Probably get some of you seen it at IKEA. And each bin it has like ten bins. Each bin has a different project. Okay, so I have in the bin is all the stuff for the project, and it's on top of the pile of stuff 
is a piece of paper saying what I'm what I'm the fuck supposed to do next. And I pull it out and go, right, I'm supposed to call the guy who will pray. So I, at any point I know where I am with each project. But if you have two, it might be easier to remember. Just know that this one you want to keep rotating. You want to keep it in play. Right? Keep it moving. Know that it's moving while you're focusing on this one over here. Okay, and then you can also add to that. You can add another one here, another one here, another one here, up here, back here. You can add them around in your mind's eye. And they're all revolving. You're just focusing on one today, then the next one, maybe tomorrow, whenever, however you want to switch back and forth. Okay? So you really have to utilize your mind. Two minutes. Anybody with a burning question? For Thanksgiving, well, I yes. Was, I was trying to correlate the two together with like Jacqueline's and Jasper's, right? Jasper's? Yes. Yeah. Because like when I, whatever I'm feeling that day is like what kind of project I'll work on. So like a comedy one that I'm kind of working in a drama, like wherever space I'm in, I have a different project almost that I like to work on in that space. But if, if I don't have a project, then I'll start a new one from that space. I don't know, it just allows you to kind of still work, but you, you don't have to work on the, like, one project at one time. It gives you exactly. space to kind of still feel the way you want to feel, but then exactly. Exactly. work as well. Exactly. Yeah. And remind me of you? Ryan. 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 Ryan, our second Ryan. Mm -hmm. Ryan. Yeah. Ryan. 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 So, yeah, exactly. But Ryan was saying you can work on multiple projects depending on your mood. I would just want to put a little boundary around that because there's a certain point that comes the time when you got to fucking finish that motherfucker. God damn it. Okay, and so you can't just say, whoa, I'm not in the mood. You know, then you've got like years go by and you haven't yet finished that, you know. So there's certain times when you have to press forward like we're talking. Press and lean into it a little bit and be a professional and finish it. So there's that, there's that too, but that's great. Anybody else really quick? Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to say something to you. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of spatial sequence synesthesia. Oh, uh, no. But um, I have synesthesia, but I have wrap, wrapping color synesthesia. Anyway, it's like about uh, how your mind works and like how you can organize. There's this kind of synesthesia where you organize stuff in oh, space cool. in relationship to it. Oh, cool. It reminds me a lot of oh, cool. what you're talking about. Oh, cool. I'll read about it. Might be it. interesting. What is it? What is it it's called spatial sequence synesthesia. Spatial sequence. It's like people place things at different distances from them uh -huh. um, in their mind's eye right. in order to, like, this is how these people organize their whole thinking. Right. Well, that's, oh, great. Well, that's probably what it is then. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> I have well, I have the, I have one that is organ organized by colors, right. like how my mind. But right. this is like organized in space. It's called spatial sequence synesthesia. Anyway, I thought it might interest you. No, that's great. That's awesome. Spatial chapter what? The just a little like there's one. There's a form of that where music can turn into color in your head. Yeah, there's that's a, what I have. Yeah, there's a composer named, well, was a composer named Olivier Messiaen, I think. And when he was a child, he used to think that they lowered the lights over the orchestra so that the audience could see the colors better. Huh. Yeah. If he would conduct his own symphonies and he'd say things like, Gentlemen, please, bluer, bluer, that's what we need, and no one understood what he meant. Olivier Messiaen, I think. I have no idea how to spell that. It's French. Uh, it's French. It's French. <laughs> We're going to say uh, Happy Thanksgiving. There's a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys.